The story of Rameses the Great, also known as Rameses the Two, is a tale of one of Egypt's most illustrious pharaohs. Born in the late 14th century BC, around 1303 BC, he was the son of Seti the Fur and Tuya. Seti the Y hailed from a prominent aristocratic and military family in northern Egypt, and Tuya was the daughter of a military officer, making Rameses' upbringing one steeped in nobility and military tradition. Rameses was born during a time of prosperity, known as the New Kingdom period, a golden age of ancient Egypt that began in the 16th century BC. This era was marked by a centralized state, flourishing trade, and remarkable cultural achievements. During this period, Egypt was a major power, with its influence extending into Nubia to the south and the Levant to the northeast. As a child, Rameses would have witnessed the reign of Pharaoh Horemheb, who restored stability to Egypt after the tumultuous period of Akhenaten's monotheistic reforms. Horemheb, lacking an heir, appointed his vizier Parames, Rameses' grandfather, as his successor, who then took the throne as Rameses III. Shortly after, Rameses' father, Seti IV, became Pharaoh further securing the family's royal legacy. Rameses' ascension to the throne came on 31st May 1279 BC, marking the beginning of a remarkable 66-year reign. His reign is noted for its military conquests, architectural achievements, and efforts to stabilize and expand Egypt's borders. One of his first major challenges as pharaoh was to counter the threat of the Sheridan Sea Pirates, who were raiding Egypt's northern coast. Rameses responded by constructing forts, new ships, and setting up warning systems culminating in a decisive victory against the pirates. With the northern threats managed, Rameses turned his attention to restoring Egyptian control over Canaan and the Levant, regions of immense strategic and economic importance. This effort led to a prolonged conflict with the Hittite Empire, resulting in the famous Battle of Kadesh in 1274 BC. Despite initial setbacks, Rameses' leadership turned the tide, and the battle is often celebrated as a significant military engagement of the Bronze Age. As part of his strategy to consolidate power in the region, Rameses established a new capital, Pi Rameses, in the northeastern Nile Delta. This city became a military and administrative hub, symbolizing Egypt's renewed strength under his rule. Simultaneously, he embarked on extensive building projects, most notably the Rameseum in Thebes, a grand temple complex that showcased his devotion to the gods and commemorated his achievements. Rameses' military campaigns extended beyond the Levant. He launched expeditions into Nubia, where he reasserted Egyptian control and established new temples and monuments. The Temple of Beit El Wali and the twin temples of Wadi Asebua are testaments to his influence in the region. Further south, near the modern-day border with Sudan, he commissioned the Grand Temples of Abu Simbel, which stand as one of his most iconic architectural legacies. Throughout his reign, Rameses was a prolific builder, commissioning numerous temples, statues, and monuments that proclaimed his divine right to rule and his military prowess. The Great Temple at Abu Simbel, with its colossal statues of Rameses, is a prime example of his architectural ambition and the sophistication of Egyptian engineering. Rameses' reign was not only defined by warfare and construction, but also by his large family. He had numerous wives and over a hundred children. His primary consort, Nefertari, was highly esteemed and their relationship is immortalized in the magnificent temples and monuments he built in her honor. His other great wives, such as Isetnafret and Mayathorn Farur, also played significant roles in his life and reign. In the latter part of his reign, Rameses focused on maintaining stability and fostering trade. He negotiated the eternal treaty with the Hittites around 1259 BC, one of the earliest known peace treaties in history. This treaty established a lasting peace between the two powers allowing both to concentrate on internal development and external threats, such as the rising Assyrian Empire. Despite the challenges and conflicts of his reign, Rameses II managed to leave an indelible mark on history. His reign saw Egypt reach its zenith in terms of territorial expansion and cultural achievements. However, the latter years of his rule were relatively uneventful, with Rameses likely dealing with the ailments of old age until his death in 1213 BC at the age of around 90. Rameses' contributions to architecture went beyond mere construction. They were statements of power and religious devotion. His buildings were often adorned with detailed reliefs, depicting his victories, religious rituals, and divine favor. The Rameseum, his mortuary temple in Thebes, featured colossal statues of Rameses in intricate carvings that showcased his achievements and relationship with the gods. Another significant architectural project was the completion of the Hypostyle Hall at the Karnak Temple Complex. This hall, one of the largest religious structures ever built was a marvel of engineering and artistry. The columns, 
some of which stand over 20 meters tall, are adorned with hieroglyphics and carvings that tell stories of Ramesh's reign and religious devotion. Ramesh's dedication to the gods extended to his temples in Nubia, where he sought to demonstrate Egypt's dominance and his own piety. The temple of Beit El Wali, carved into a cliff, is a testament to his military campaigns and victories in Nubia. The twin temples of Wadi Asebua, dedicated to Amun-Ra and himself, further solidified his presence and influence in the region. Perhaps the most famous of his architectural achievements is the Abu Simbel Temple Complex. These temples, carved into a mountainside, were designed to impress both the Nubians and anyone traveling along the Nile. The Great Temple of Abu Simbel features four colossal statues of Rameses, seated on thrones, each over 20 meters tall. These statues, along with the detailed interior carvings, highlight Rameses' power and divine right to rule. The smaller temple, dedicated to his beloved wife Nefertari and the goddess Hathor, underscores the importance of his family and his reverence for the gods. Ramesh's architectural legacy also included the construction of numerous obelisks, many of which were transported to major cities like Thebes and Heliopolis. These towering structures, often inscribed with his achievements and dedications to the gods, served as symbols of his reign's grandeur. One such obelisk, originally erected at the Temple of Luxor, now stands in the Place de la Concorde in Paris, a testament to his enduring legacy. Throughout his reign, Rameses maintained a strong military presence, not only to expand Egypt's borders but also to protect its wealth and stability. His campaigns in Canaan, Syria, and Nubia ensured that Egypt remained a dominant power in the region. The peace treaty with the Hittites allowed Rameses to focus on other threats, such as the rising power of the Libyans to the west. Rameses' campaigns in Libya were significant, as they secured Egypt's western borders and ensured the safety of the Nile Delta. His efforts to establish forts and reinforce existing ones along the Mediterranean coast demonstrated his strategic acumen and commitment to Egypt's security. These fortifications helped protect Egypt from raids and invasions, contributing to the stability and prosperity of his reign. Rameses' legacy extended beyond his death, influencing subsequent generations and leaving a lasting impact on Egyptian culture and history. His successors, particularly those of the 20th dynasty, often adopted his name, Ramesses, in an attempt to associate themselves with his greatness. This practice underscored the enduring significance of his reign and the high regard in which he was held. Ramesses II's mummified remains, discovered in 1881, provided valuable insights into his life and reign. The mummy, now housed in the Egyptian Museum in Cairo, revealed details about his physical appearance, health, and the embalming practices of the time. Scientific analysis of his remains has shown that he suffered from arthritis, dental issues, and other ailments in his later years, yet he managed to live an extraordinarily long life for his era. The discovery of Ramesh's tomb also shed light on the burial practices of the New Kingdom and the measures taken to protect the pharaoh's remains. The tomb, originally located in the Valley of the Kings, was moved several times to prevent looting, reflecting the high value placed on his legacy and the desire to preserve it for posterity. Ramesh's impact on popular culture has been profound, with his life and reign serving as inspiration for numerous works of fiction, films, and scholarly studies. His depiction in literature, such as in Percy Bysshe Shelley's poem Ozymandias, highlights the timeless fascination with his legacy and the broader themes of power and impermanence. Shelley's poem, with its famous lines, Look on my works, ye mighty, and despair, serves as a poignant reminder of the transitory nature of human achievements. In modern times, Ramesh's temples and monuments continue to attract visitors from around the world, offering a glimpse into the grandeur of ancient Egypt. The relocation of the Abu Simbel temples in the 1960s, a monumental engineering feat, preserved these treasures for future generations and underscored the global significance of his architectural legacy. Ramesh's the Great remains a towering figure in the annals of history, his reign marked by military prowess, architectural brilliance, and a lasting impact on Egyptian civilization. His story is one of ambition, achievement, and enduring legacy, a testament to the power and grandeur of ancient Egypt. Thank you for watching this exploration of Ramesh's the Great. If you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, and subscribe to Historical Highway for more captivating historical content.